It finally happened. The Valkyrie drove a record lap in Silverstone. And oh, what a lap it was. Until now we could see journalists driving and testing the car, but now we could see a professional driver squeezing performance out of the Valkyrie. As far as we know, the car was in stock condition with road tires. The track was dry but cold, and as far as we could see not too windy, which is a standard problem in Silverstone. And we also have to thank Aston Martin for revealing a pure onboard lap, after they released a marketing video about the lap first, where we couldn't see much. In the pure onboard lab, we can see and hear a couple of interesting things. I linked the onboard video in the description below. First of all, it crossed the start line with 249 km per hour. And if one car does that with 290 km per hour, a GT3 car with 210. So that already shows you where the Valkyrie sits. It has massive amounts of power and much higher straight line speed than a GT3 car. Village corner before the Wellington Strait is full in an F1 car with around 240 km per hour. The Valkyrie does that full as well but with 210 km per hour, so 30 km per hour slower. And we have to note here that on the apex before that the F1 car was already 30 km per hour faster. So the additional speed of an F1 car comes from higher cornering speeds because of soft race slicks, but in terms of power the Valkyrie is very similar. At the bridge, the Aston could even catch up and passes it with 292 km per hour, while the F1 car is just 10 km per hour faster. At the end of the straight, the F1 car reaches 319 km per hour, the Valkyrie 315. But keep in mind that the Valkyrie is around 400 kg heavier on road tires and brakes around 100 m earlier than the F1 car. The GT3 car, in comparison, breaks 60 meters later than the Valkyrie, which is only possible because it's on race slicks and only reaches 251 km per hour. What we then see is the biggest limitation of the Valkyrie, the loose rear end under braking. But we have to keep in mind here that we talk about a road car on road tires turning into Brooklands with 200 km per hour, so it's high level complaining. But it is what keeps the Valkyrie from even better lap times, and we can see it at every braking zone. The most famous corner to reveal the error performance of a car is Cops Corner. The Valkyrie reaches 310 km per hour, although it breaks well before the 100 m board, the same speed as the F1 car. The difference is just that the F1 car with its race tires and downforce doesn't brake for Cops and goes full throttle through the corner while the Valkyrie breaks to around 170 km per hour, which is a big difference. The GT3 car in comparison only reaches 250 km per hour on the straight and breaks to 170 km per hour just like the Valkyrie. The fast maggots turn shows how an F1 car really works and it doesn't even have to lift while Valkyrie and GT3 car have to. So the F1 car comes out of the three fast corners with 256 km per hour, the Valkyrie with 193. Really impressive is now what happens on hangar straight. The Valkyrie accelerates to an astonishing 330 km per hour and he does that so easily that it gives you an idea of what active aero can do and how strong the Valkyrie is. The F1 car only reaches 318 with DRS, the GT3 car 264. One thing to note on the Valkyrie here are the relatively slow upshifts, but that might be with torque fill from the electric motor, so it actually still accelerates, although it sounds slow. So all in all, we have to thank Aston Martin to bring this car on the road and to give us a proper onboard lap with the Valkyrie driven hard. They created a car which is providing GT3 lap times on road tires and higher speeds on the straights and faster acceleration at high speeds than an F1 car. What do you think about the Valkyrie's performance? Let me know in the comments below and see you at the next video.